All right, so welcome to the weekend. Um, this is the after work video. So uh, I'm going to be knocking off the uh, the formal practice, uh, which will be another round of yoga, um, which is <laughs> kind of a uh, 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 tricky. Um, it's something I it's something I kind of uh, have been I dread a little bit, but like when I do it, I actually feel uh, better than than I like the like the little bit of like pain that discomfort it causes uh, ends up being worth it in the end. And you know, to be honest, if it does cause me pain and discomfort, um, I'm kind of violating the spirit of the the exercise. This is a mindful yoga. It's not meant to be athletic, so I should probably be doing the the chair version if if it, if I really dread it so much. But as it is, um, I I can definitely get through it. So um, so yeah. Let's All see. Right. Let's see where what. So I I need to uh, do the reading. And I need to do uh, the formal and informal practice. So the informal practice, I, I did do this, um, but the thing is, like, I, I've I've designed my my life to like not be that stressful. So like, um, it's uh, I, I I haven't really had to do this that much. Like like there was there's never really been kind of a situation where like like the example from the teacher was he made a wrong turn. And uh, he he ended up in a construction site, even though th there was a sign, and he didn't make a wrong turn. He he intentionally violated what a sign told him not to do because somebody else did it first, and he got caught. the The person who did it first didn't, so he he used this to to explain um, the situation. He's trying to get to a, an event. Uh, he didn't know where to go, so he turned down here to try to get to the event, and then. That led to a, a nice exchange of the person giving him uh, directions. So I, I'm not really in situations like that very often. I um, kind of designed my life to be uh, pretty low stress. Um, so um, yeah, I, I I I did it. I did it uh, talking to to ChatGPT again. Um, so. Uh, what what was going on when you, when you thought to take it? I I don't really remember. Um, so um i guess just just kind of just kind of uh working at home i think uh, on my own uh deep deep into work probably uh what did you notice while you were doing the the breathing space um yeah i, I don't i don't really remember um so um what did i notice while i was doing the breathing space um uh, noted, notice my breath in and out through my nose. Uh, what did you notice uh, after? Uh, uh, just uh, just the the um, the 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 uh, outside world again. And then what did you learn? Um, uh, I, I, I guess, I guess I've, I felt like, uh, felt like a, like pretty intense emotions. I, I think my emotions can be pretty intense. Really intense. Um, so that, that, that's part of why I'm doing MBSR, um, hence MBSR, uh, may help. Yeah. So, and this is, this is a big part of MBSR, this one minute breathing space. It's, it's basically a life skill, but yeah, I really, I really haven't had to do it. Um, uh, I haven't been in a situation like, uh, you know, taking, trying to, trying to sneak, uh, down, down a street that's closed off or, um, um, so, um, you know, I, I work, I work a full-time job so that that can definitely be a good opportunity to, to, uh, to, uh, do this. And I do have, I do have one from work on there. So, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, you know what, let me, let me do it right now. So, so stop means stop. T means take a breath. 
And really it just means notice your breathing more than anything else. You, you don't have to alter your breath. You don't have to change it. You don't have to think to yourself, oh, I'm, I'm angry. Oh, I'm this and I need to be that. You, you just notice. How are you breathing? That, that's all you need to do, nothing else. And then uh, O is is uh, observe. I, I think. Um, well, we sh we should know what it what it is. Uh, uh, but but uh, yeah. So O O, o is is uh, ob observe. So observe your your own self. I'm really think. Yeah, like I I'm amped up. I'm I'm heated right now. I'm breathing, you know, as if I were uh, about to like get up and and and. Uh, shout right so like it's um you know that that's 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 the third step and then and then the fourth step is is uh proceed so now now that you you kind of have that sense of of uh what's going on you you can proceed if you want to you know if you're amped up and you're you're uh kind of angry and and, and you think that's going to work uh go with that um, but um, this is a good chance to, during that O, that observing, you can load in things. Like, for example, in the exam, not the exam, but the example, um, the, he, took, he took that wrong turn, but he did, it, he did it purposely. So, you know, when this guy's yelling at him, you could easily say, oh, well, your sign didn't say this, you know, this, that. But, you know, he was able to load in you know my, my time is important to me I, I'm trying to get to this place you know the, the the best thing I can do right now is ask this person to give me directions so he was able to load that in it's like even though this guy is angry he's, he's yelling at me cursing at me he might be able to give me directions it, it's it's worth asking him it, it, it's more worth the time to ask him for directions than it is to do anything else you know it's just going to escalate the the situation so you can you can load in uh things like that um and and choose to proceed with them whereas before if you didn't take that time it's just all out the window you know oh well your sign wasn't clear enough and you know you know that guy you let that guy get away with it but not me you know so um so so that's so so let me let me write down this one because i'm kind of running behind on this one so what was the situation um making a youtube video uh uh what was going on when you thought to take a break trying to trying to log one of these what did you notice while you were doing the the breathing space so i so i noticed that i i really snapped uh back to really good oral posture uh naturally uh was able to comfortably breathe through my nose uh felt really good and and calm uh thinking about my breath okay and then what did you notice after you did the the breathing space um uh oh i so so i'm back now um um i i guess i guess i guess i i, I remembered uh um uh, more about the the course content and i was able to speak about it more at length so that example of of the construction site and then what did you learn um uh, I, uh, I learned learned that this exercise can be used to load in uh, uh, things into your mind as if uh, from the movie The Matrix. Um, that that would happen during the O uh, phase, the observing. And it, you know, it's not about, it's not about specifically doing that. It's about, it's about being mindfully aware of the present moment, 
and, and just just you know not intentionally saying you know trying to recall or remember something it's like oh well at this moment right now in the present someone is asking me for like my uh id you know if, 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 if you could you could show them your id right so so like if you're if you're having a panic attack <laughs> you don't even know what an id is right so that so that's the idea of like loading in things into your mind it's it's not about um uh like recalling or like your memory it's it's not about uh uh studying things and then and then later retrieving like what you learned it's it's about responding in real time to uh to the the inputs that that you're you're receiving right here now in real time um with appropriate with 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 custom tailored responses that are that are 100 percent in tune with what what the real time needs so and that that was a perfect example um, the the construction workers uh, yelling at him, you know. Oh well, your sign wasn't clear. Oh, you let that guy get away with it. Oh, you're such a rude a hole. How could you uh, speak to somebody like this? That made an honest mis that made a mistake. Um, you know, um, I I need to get here. How do I get there? Um, you know. So so it's it, it's it's a much better response because it diffuses the situation. The the construction workers probably expecting some clap back. Um, it's uh, so that kind of uh, 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 gives him a little bit of sense of relief that like the person he's talking to is like nice and not going to like come back at him. And then um, it also, uh, you know, he got the directions like like the construction worker gave him good directions and he, and he got to where he needed to go on time. So it uh, yeah, it, it, it that that's what I mean by, by, by loading in things. So I, ho I hope that's clear. And with that, I've got uh, only two more log entries left, um, and uh, week five starts in two days. So I'll I'll save this, and I'll, I'll try to I'll try to I'll try to do this now. Tomorrow I've got a huge day. It's the weekend. I like to pack my weekends full. So um, I, I guarantee you there'll be a good time sometime during the the weekend for me to uh, to to do this. So I'll, so I'll try to keep that in mind. I'll, <laughs> okay. And, and, and with that, um, now it's time for the, the formal practice, which is a whole half hour of, of yoga, too. So this, this is kind of rough, um, but I'll, uh, I'll get it out of the way now. Uh, and I, I need to pause just, just so that I'm – because it's a half an hour. So uh, I'll, I'll take a quick pause, come back, and then get this out of the way. All right, I'm back. So let's get this knocked off. Hi, my name is Dr. Lynn Rossi, health psychologist for Healthy for Life. Welcome to the practice of yoga. While you may think yoga is just an exercise in strengthening and stretching the body, the essence of yoga is about calming the busy mind. For that to happen, I'll be reminding you to come back to your body and your breath throughout the practice, listening to the messages you receive from your body in order to find your version of each posture finding your edge in each pose, and knowing how long to hold it. Once you're in your version of the posture, inviting the breath to be deep and full in order to bring energy and vitality to the body. Being completely open to whatever you're experiencing in the moment, without judgment, without needing things to be any different than what they are. Jenny will be doing the chair modifications of each pose in case you need or want to do yoga from your chair. Finally, we always recommend that you check with your health care provider before starting a new practice of physical activity. So let's get started by lying flat on the floor in the corpse posture. <clears throat> your arms are by your side with the palms facing up toward the ceiling. Um, you can have your knees bent with your um, knees falling apart together or you can have your legs straight and the feet falling apart from one another beginning to connect with your breath feeling the rising and falling of the belly 
the expanding and deflating of the rib cage, the upper chest rising and falling, and taking some time to deepen the breath, allowing it to be full, the belly soft. Then stretching your arms up overhead and clasping your thumbs together or leaving them in a parallel position and reaching the toes and fingers in opposite directions. Getting a nice full body stretch. And continuing to breathe as you do so. And then releasing and bringing your arms back down to your sides and pausing here for a moment. And noticing if the body maybe feels a little bit longer and then rolling over onto your belly in preparation for the Sphinx posture. Your arms will be bent with your forearms flat on the ground and they're parallel to each other like railroad tracks. Your elbows should be directly underneath your shoulders, spreading your fingers wide apart and looking straight ahead. Your sternum lifted as you move your shoulder blades down your back feeling the arch in the spine, watching the tendency to collapse your shoulders and continuing to work at moving your shoulder blades down your back, and inviting the breath to be deep, relaxing the face, relaxing the jaw. And from here, moving into a table position by placing your hands underneath your shoulders and coming up to a tabletop with your wrists right beneath your shoulders and your knees right below your hips. Your knees are about hip width apart. And from here, we're going to bring your right knee and your forehead together as best you can and then straighten the right leg out behind you, pointing your toes and lifting it up as far as it'll go, looking up and bringing your knee and your forehead together as best you can, and then bringing your leg back up, looking up, and the last time bringing your knee and forehead together, arching your back, and then straightening out, and this time leaving your leg here and pulsing it up six or seven times. and then crossing your leg to the left side and placing your toes on the floor as you look over your left shoulder, creating a nice C-curve in the spine, breathing. And then coming back to a neutral position and we'll switch sides. This time bringing your forehead, your left knee and your forehead together and then straightening your left leg out in the back, bringing your left knee to your forehead, and then straightening it out in the back, lifting up, and bringing your left knee to your forehead, and then straightening the leg in the back, and pulsing it up toward the ceiling six or seven times, breathing, feeling the strength in the back that it takes to do this, and then moving your foot over to the right side now, toes on the floor, looking out over your right shoulder, getting a nice curve in the spine, leaving your arms straight, and then coming back into a neutral position, and then we're going to come into um, a sitting position with the soles of the feet together into the bound angle posture, placing your hands behind your back on the floor for support, moving the heels and pelvis toward one another and pressing your hands into the, into the floor to lift your chest and gently rocking your knees from side to side, breathing and relaxing, imagining the tension and tightness in your inner thighs, leaving on each out breath allowing your muscles to slowly release. And from here we'll move into a stretch for the back of the legs, 
So you're going to start by straightening the right leg and leaving the sole of the left foot on the inside of the right thigh. And your right knee is pointed up toward the ceiling, sitting up nice and tall, and then just allowing the chest to fall out over the right leg. Resting your hands on your leg wherever you end up. And your right toes will be pointed up towards the ceiling. Connecting with the breath and imagine the breath moving all the way down into the right leg and back again, breathing and relaxing, letting the face and jaw relax. Taking your time. Nice, long, deep breaths in and out. Feeling the body begin to open and release. And then sitting back up again and placing the sole of the left foot on the floor, okay, on the inside of your right thigh, bringing your left fingertips underneath your right leg and twisting to the right as you bring your right hand behind you and looking out behind you and breathing. Toes of your right foot are still flexed up toward the ceiling. Even though it's a little more difficult to breathe in this position, taking some nice long deep breaths in and out. And then releasing by coming back to center. And then we'll move to the other side. So straightening the left leg and bringing the sole of the right foot to the inside of the left thigh. Sitting up nice and tall, taking a deep breath in, and then letting the chest fall forward over the left leg, keeping the toes of the left foot flexed and up toward the ceiling. Giving your body time to open up and release. Breathing all the way down into those muscles along the back of the left leg. Taking your time, letting the face and the jaw relax. Noticing if this side may be different than the other side. And just noticing the difference without judgment but just with curiosity and interest. One more deep breath in and out, and then we'll sit back up and place the right foot on the floor, the right leg bent. Bring the fingertips of the right hand underneath your left leg, twisting to your left, and looking out behind you over the left shoulder. If you want to get a deeper stretch, you can even kind of push that right elbow into the right leg. Twisting and breathing. Consciously taking some deep breaths in and out here. Your eyes can be open or closed. And then releasing the hands, coming back to center, and moving into a cross-legged position for the next set of stretches, focusing on the neck and shoulders. Hmm. And when you're ready, letting your head fall forward and lowering your chin to your chest, feeling the stretch along the back of the neck, taking a deep breath in and out. And then rolling your right ear over your right shoulder. You can even re reach your left fingers toward the floor to get a little deeper stretch. Taking a deep breath in and out. 
and then rolling the head back through center and bring the left ear over the left shoulder, reaching the right fingertips towards the floor, inviting the breath to be deep. Encourage the release of the muscles along the right side of the neck. Relaxing the face and then rolling your head back down again and then lifting it straight up and letting your head fall straight back, getting a nice stretch in the throat and the chest. And then bringing your hand, head back to center. And now clasping your hands in front of you and then reversing the clasp and pushing the palms of your hands out as far as you can go. Taking a deep breath into the space between the shoulder blades, feeling the stretch, and then lifting the arms up overhead and pressing one palm and then the other up towards the ceiling. Feeling the stretch along the arms and armpits, breathing in and out. And then unclasping your hands and bringing your arms down and behind you and clasping your hands behind your back, squeezing your shoulder blades together, opening up the chest and feeling the stretch along the front of the body. Continuing to squeeze the shoulder blades together and then lifting the hands up as far as they will go. They might just go a little bit further up and feeling the blood and oxygen moving to the shoulder blades a part of the body that gets sore and accumulates a lot of tension. And then unclasping your hands and coming back to center, resting your hands on your knees and we'll move into some side stretches. Placing the left hand on the floor beside you and reaching your right arm up toward the ceiling, taking a deep breath in and then reaching out over to the left Getting a nice stretch along the right side of the body. Breathing, opening up the chest. Relaxing your face. Noticing if your attention goes someplace else once we've moved into a posture. And just bringing yourself back to the breath and the body. Then coming back up again and lowering the right arm to your side and closing your eyes if you feel comfortable. Noticing the sensations in the body. Noticing the difference between the right side and the left side. And then opening your eyes once more and um, this time lifting your left arm up, breathing in as you reach your fingertips toward the ceiling. And on the out breath, leaning over to the right, reaching, breathing, feeling the stretch on the left side now, relaxing the face and jaw, letting the breath be deep and full. And when you're ready, coming back up again, and pausing here for a moment and again feeling the effects of the stretch. And now we're going to move into a downward facing dog position. So you're going to start by coming to your hands and knees. <clears throat> and this time in the table position, instead of having your wrists right beneath your shoulders, move your hands forward just slightly. Your fingers should be spread wide apart tucking your toes under and lifting your bottom up towards the ceiling as you bring your heels down toward the floor. Your feet should be about oh, a foot apart and you can work one heel and then the other down to the floor to get a nice stretch along the back of your legs. So you've already warmed up just a little. Breathing, pushing out through the palms of your hands. The downward facing dog posture 
is an all-purpose posture that helps strengthen the body and stretch it. And then when you're ready, we're going to begin to walk our hands and our feet toward one another until you come into a forward hanging bend position. Your knees will be soft, your head will be relaxed and facing down. You can be holding on to your legs if you need to, but just letting the body hang forward, letting all the blood rush down into the head. Taking some deep breaths here, and then slowly we're going to begin to bring our body into a standing position. Taking your time, letting your head still be falling down toward the floor, stacking the vertebrae one at a time, leaving your chin on your chest, letting it come up the last after you've stopped, come to a standing position. And then standing here for a moment <clears throat> in the mountain posture, looking at your feet so that you can position them about hip width apart. Your knees are going to be soft, your legs are engaged. Taking a deep breath in and letting your tailbone be slightly tucked, lifting your sternum up toward the ceiling bringing your shoulders up to your ears and then letting your shoulders just relax. Standing here in this mountain posture with your feet rooted into the floor and your head lifted up toward the ceiling. And then as you breathe in, lifting your arms up over your head. And as you breathe out, bringing your arms down and in front of you as you bend your knees into the chair. Arms parallel to the floor, knees bent, breathing, then lowering the arms, straightening the legs as you breathe in, and lift your arms up overhead as you breathe out, coming into the chair. Breathing, breathing in as you lift up, and breathing out as you come back into the chair and holding the chair for just a few breaths. Trying to be as relaxed as you can, relaxing back into that easy chair, relaxing the face, relaxing your mind that might be resisting holding the posture, maybe even smiling, noticing the strength that it takes to hold the chair position. If you've gone too far, you can come up a little. And if you need to come up before I say to, feel free to do that. Mm, feeling the fatigue in the legs, the strength that it takes to hold your arms up, relaxing as best you can. And then when you're ready, straightening the legs and lowering the hands to the sides and pausing here for a moment, feeling the effects of having done the chair. Your heart rate may be increased. There might be more warmth in the body. And now we're going to move into the half moon posture. Okay, once again, breathing in as you lift your arms up overhead into the temple position by clasping your hands together, then straightening the thumbs and first fingers. Or you can just leave your arms parallel reaching your fingertips toward the ceiling as you breathe in and as you breathe out moving the left tip to the left as you reach over to the right and get a nice stretch along the left side of the body you don't have to go very far to get a nice stretch if you've gone too far you might notice it's a little difficult to breathe or you might quit breathing so come back up a little bit Then coming back to center and moving to the opposite side. Right hip to the right, arms to the left, stretching out. Feeling the stretch along the right side of the body, breathing in and out. Relaxing the face and jaw. And then coming back up again. Breathing in as you lift the fingertips up towards the ceiling and breathing out 
as you bring your arms down to your sides, taking your time, feeling the arms moving through space, the heaviness of the arms, the tingling in the arms, getting in touch with all of the sensations as you bring them slowly down to your sides and then feeling the effects of the release and the posture on the body. And now we'll be moving into a series of standing postures. We'll start by bringing the feet about three or four feet apart. You're gonna turn the right foot out at a 90 degree angle and the left foot in about 45 degrees. You're gonna bend the right knee over the right ankle so that the shin is perpendicular to the floor. Bringing your arms so that they're parallel to the floor. You can look back at your back arm to make sure they're parallel. And then keep your gaze on the middle finger of your right hand. Once you're here, breathing nice and deep. Making sure you're not leaning to the right, out over that right leg, but bringing your torso up so that it's perpendicular to the floor. Pressing the tailbone down toward the floor, relaxing the face and the jaw. Dwelling in the warrior two position. And now we'll move into the reversed warrior and you'll simply shift the palm of your right hand so that it's facing up toward the ceiling. And then windmilling your arms so that the left arm comes down, the left hand comes down to the left leg and the right arm and hand are extended up toward the ceiling. Looking out over the palm of the right hand, that's comfortable for you, making sure your left knee is still bent. Taking a few breaths here. And then we'll move into uh, the next position. So come back to warrior two briefly. And then bring your right forearm down to your right leg and bring your left arm up so that it's up next to your ear and your fingertips are pointing out to the right. You wanna create a nice stretch from your left heel through your left fingertips, lengthening the entire left side of your body trying to create as much length along the torso as possible, even on the right side, so you don't want to collapse into the torso. And breathing here in the side angle posture. To move out of the stretch, you're gonna bring your left arm back so it's parallel to the floor and reach the fingertips to the left to pull you out of the posture, straightening the right leg and coming back into the mountain posture one more time, just to feel the effects of doing those postures on the body. Hmm. And now moving to the other side, bringing your feet three or four feet apart, turning the left foot out at a 90 degree angle and the right foot at 45, bending the left knee over the um, left ankle, bring your arms up parallel to the floor and turning your head to the left and keeping your gaze on the middle finger of the left hand. Once you're here, inviting the breath to be deep and again, checking to see that your torso is perpendicular to the floor, pressing the tailbone down to the floor and relaxing as best you can in this strengthening posture, relaxing the face and the jaw. And then we'll move into the reverse warrior, shifting the palm of the left hand so that it's facing up toward the ceiling. And then windmilling the arms, right hand down to the right leg, left hand up toward the ceiling, looking out over the left hand now and breathing, relaxing the face and jaw. And then we'll move into the side angle on this side by bringing the left forearm down to the left leg. Right arm stretches out overhead, reaching those fingertips out, creating that nice stretch along the entire right side of the body, 
from your right heel to your fingertips. Stretching and breathing, being fully present for the side angle posture. And then again, to move out of the stretch, you'll bring your right arm back parallel, bring your fingers out to the right to pull you out of the posture, and then coming back into the mountain pose one more time. And you can close your eyes and let all of your attention come inside to the sensations of the body, letting the body relax from having done that series of strengthening postures. Now we're going to move into a posture called the tree. The tree is a balancing posture. Now the trick to doing balancing postures is to find one spot of attention on the floor in front of you or on the wall. And this gives you concentration by looking at one spot. We'll start by moving your weight over to your left foot, and then bringing the heel of your right foot um, to your ankle. You can leave your toes on the floor and bringing the palms of your hands together in front of your chest in prayer position. If you think you might want to go to the next version of the tree, you can try bringing your sole to the calf of the left leg. Okay, here we go. Uh, bringing your hands into position, into prayer position. And you can also bring it up to the inside of your left thigh. Taking your time to find your version of the posture today. Wherever you can manage to put the foot is fine. You don't want to put your foot over your knee because of risk of injury. You want to be able to balance and breathe in whatever version you choose. Keeping your gaze on one spot of attention. And when you're ready and balanced, you can stretch your arms up overhead into a V position or into temple if you'd like. Remembering to breathe, stretching up while at the same time feeling rooted and grounded like a tree. And when you're ready, bringing your hands back down to your chest, pausing here for a moment, and then lowering your right foot, lowering the arms, and standing still for a moment feeling the energy that's created by doing a balancing posture like the tree. Noticing the heart rate, the breath. And then we'll switch sides by moving the weight over to your right foot and bringing your left foot either to your ankle, to the calf, or to the inside of your thigh. Taking your time to find your position. Bringing your hands into a prayer position in front of your chest looking at one spot of attention in front of you or on the floor. And when you feel balanced, you can bring your arms up overhead into a V or into temple. Standing and imagining yourself as your favorite tree, rooted, grounded into the floor, breathing, relaxing as best you can being present. Noticing if this side feels different than the other side. One side will often be easier than the other and just noticing that without judgment. And then bringing your hands back down to your heart center and pausing here for a moment. Lowering the left foot, lowering the arms, and breathing in and out, letting the body assimilate the effects of the tree posture. And from here, we're going to move into the goddess warrior posture. So start by bringing your feet out about three feet. And then um, your feet are going to angle out at about a 45 degree angle on each side. Bending your knees to where it feels comfortable and bringing your arms so that they're parallel to the floor with the palms facing up toward the ceiling. Bending the elbows so that the fingertips are pointed up toward the ceiling and the palms facing one another. And breathing. Relaxing as best you can into this goddess 
warrior posture. A posture that requires some strength. And we've been doing a lot of strengthening of the leg muscles in this series of postures, so you may feel some fatigue here. So if you need to come up before I say to, feel free to. You can always come out of a posture and then come back in. Relaxing the face and the jaw. Nice, long, deep breaths in and out to help support you in this pose. And then when you're ready, straightening the knees and lowering the arms and bringing your feet back to center into the mountain posture. One more time. Taking a deep breath in and letting the body relax in this mountain posture. And now we're gonna come back down onto the floor for one last forward bend called the turtle. So <clears throat> coming back down onto the floor, your feet are in front of you, about three feet apart. And you're gonna bring your hands to the center and then thread them underneath your ankles, right hand around your right ankle, left hand around your left, and just let your body fall forward. Letting the head fall forward. Close your eyes. Letting your head be relaxed. You might want to move it side to side, up and down, just to make sure it's not holding any tension. Breathing in and out like a turtle in its shell, feeling the back arch, feeling the release in the spine, taking some time here to let the body relax. These forward bending postures are thought to be postures of surrender, so possibly thinking about something you might want to let go of something you're worried about, some grievance, whatever it is, just letting it go. Breathing and relaxing, stretching out the spine. A couple of more deep breaths in and out. And then to move out of the posture, bring your hands back to center, palms facing down. You push yourself up slowly into a seated position. And then making your way down onto your back on the floor for the final posture, the corpse pose. You can bend your knees and have them falling together. Or you can straighten your legs and let your feet fall apart. Your arms are by your side with the palms facing up toward the ceiling. Or you can place your right hand on your belly and your left hand over your chest, allowing your eyes to close and the body to just melt into the floor. Completely letting go. Letting the floor do all of the work of holding you up. And now congratulating yourself for taking the time to nourish your body in this way. Feeling gratitude for the body, for all of the things that it does from moment to moment to keep you alive. And perhaps setting the intention to engage in this type of activity on a regular basis. Honoring the body's need to move and stretch and breathe. All right, so that is that. Got it out of the way. I actually don't know why I 
get feelings of dread before that starts because that, that that is actually pretty nice so uh, all i need to do is is leave some comments so so had uh feelings of dread and apprehension to get started um uh uh but uh feel good afterwards um felt uh skinny um uh uh right uh arm had more trouble staying up than left um and then uh and then uh yeah i i that that that's all all it, it is um i have to have to uh have to uh yawn lot so there we go so that's as simple as as it needs to be um so the next part will be uh the readings and i'm not sure i, I think i can probably get at least one reading done um i've got all of them to go so if i can even just knock off one that would uh really really help so um so this is MBSR 31. So the next one is what is stress and it's a reading. So I, I think I'm gonna try to get this one done. It's short um, and, and I might try to get more than that. So this is what is stress. There are reasons we experience stress. Stress is a physical expression of our fight or flight survival mechanism. A threatening situation will trigger a stress response which prepares us to confront or flee a possible danger. This helps for immediate danger, but unfortunately the stress response is also triggered by tense situations where physical action is not an option, such as uh, unreasonable boss, heavy traffic, or financial problems. Two stripe types of stress. Number one, acute. Acute stress prepares us for fight or flight and is generally short term. Number two, chronic. Chronic stress is long term and is the main cause of stress related health problems. Stress causes chemical changes in the body that left unchecked can have negative effects on both mental and physical health. High levels of stress contribute to health issues as diverse as depression, insomnia, heart disease, skin disorders, and headaches. Acute stress in detail. Acute stress is a short-term response to the body's sympathetic nervous system. How long acute stress lasts may vary. The response can last for a few minutes or a few weeks. During an acute uh, uh, stress uh, episode, um, the uh, adrenal uh, medulla, and remember acute is, is, is uh, uh, short term, immediate and short term. So the, the adrenal uh, medulla, part of the adrenal glands, um, the two, two uh, small glands located on, on top of each uh, kidney. So let's go to body zygote and take a look at those. Okay, and then these are the adrenals. There we go. So it, it's it's up really high. Um, it, it's 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 basically like a little bit under the the. It's almost like directly under the the solar plexus, like just a few a few inches under the solar plexus. So it's 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 surprisingly high. It's it's definitely uh, in in the mid back, if not even a little bit of like the upper back. So. And that's something that kind of surprised me. I, I always thought of my kidneys as being like really low, but I don't think they are. All right, so part of the adrenal glands, and, and of course that's just a representation. It, it's it's not it's not real life, um, so it, it, it de they definitely could be lower than that. Uh, so two small glands located on top of each uh, kidney uh, begins to release um, catecholamine hormones including adrenaline and uh, noradrenaline. In all, um, over 17 different hormones are released during an acute stress response. Uh, physical responses. So blood sugar levels rise, 
additional red blood cells are released to carry extra oxygen. So this, this is, you know, that it's a good thing to be under stress if you're going to like give a performance or something, you know, stage fright, like, you know, stage excitement, you know, why call it stage fright? It's, it's stage excitement. You're, you're going to have additional blood cells to carry extra oxygen. That sounds good to me. Um, more blood sugar. That sounds good too. Uh, low blood sugar, you, you uh, pass out. So you don't definitely don't want to do that on stage. So, so far it sounds good to me. Um, peripheral uh, blood vessels uh, restrict, uh, pulse clickings, uh, uh, blood pressure uh, uh, rises and uh, digestion uh, stops. I mean, this is probably a good one if you're on stage two, uh, a, a stage as well. You don't want to do uh, something uh, in your pants that you don't, uh, you don't, you don't want the, the performance to involve your pants at all, most likely. So uh, yeah, forget about stage fright. Um, it's stage excitement. Like some of these I would want if I were to go on stage. And then chronic stress in detail. Chronic stress occurs when continuous acute stress responses keep the body on alert continuously, negatively affecting health. The ongoing stress response carries the hypothalamus and pituitary gland portions of the brain to release a chemical known as ACTH, which is adrenocorticotropic hormone. ACTH known as the stress hormone, stimulates the adrenal gland to produce and release cortisol. Cortisol is one of the hormones associated with walking and sleeping. Levels of cortisol naturally fluctuate during the day. Cortisol levels are highest in the morning and lowest at night. High levels of cortisol in the morning help us wake up. When chronic stress stimulates cortisol production, the daily cycle of cortisol levels is disrupted. High levels of cortisol may occur at night. This can result in insomnia. All right, so stress effects on the body. Um, yeah, so it can, it can definitely cause uh, uh, problems. So just, you know, the, uh, stage excitement um, is, is good, but if you're just constantly under stress all, all the time, all day, every day, um, you can have atherosclerosis, you can have migraines, hypertension, sleep, sleep de deprivation. And, and I'm sure people have experienced that the performance is over um, and, and you can't sleep afterwards. Well, you know, at that point, it'd be nice to do something to kind of relieve that stress because you don't really need it anymore. Performance is over. Um, then chronic fatigue, <laughs> which is kind of funny uh, that, that you could experience both of those because they're kind of, uh, oh, well, actually, no, they're, 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 uh, they're related for sure um and then um, um depression uh diarrhea or constipation acid reflux disease acne hives and uh eating disorders so yeah stress can be good, definitely good um especially uh, acute uh stress but uh but chronic stress uh, uh uh can can really cause problems stress affects your health Imbalances of cortisol and other stress-related hormones weaken health over time and the effects are not immediately seen. Practicing stress management techniques can help minimize the effects of stress on your health. High levels of stress cortisol contributes to weight gain. So remember what we mean when we're talking about stress here. We're talking about a release of these uh, chemicals in your, in your body. Cortisol promotes the synthesis of glucose from proteins in order to make more glucose available as fuel in response to stressful situations. This reduces lean muscle mass and increases blood sugar levels. Research has shown that cortisol also increases the disposition of uh, uh, the, the deposition of, of abdominal fat and increases cravings for food, especially carbohydrates, sugars. This helps to set up the vicious cycle of stress and overeating, especially of unhealthy foods. And, and I feel like that's that what got me. That's how I gained 100 pounds uh, during the pandemic, you know, stressful, dealing with um, so many stressful things. Food was the only thing that, that, really, uh, that really worked for me. Uh, to reduce that stress. So when created, uh, which created more stress and more overeating ETC by, by supporting a person's adrenal glands 
and lowering cortisol input, this vicious cycle can be broken. So I, I don't know how you support uh, a person's adrenal glands. So let's, let's talk to ChatGPT. We, we live in the modern world, right? Okay, so I'm putting that article in. And then I'm going to ask it a question. So the question I will ask is, um, I'll, I'll just ask you to, this is my favorite prompt, uh, evaluate this claim. This is my absolute favorite prompt. I do this all the time. So let's see what it has to say about that. So it's partially valid, but it, but it simplifies a complex process. Um, so, so the idea of supporting adrenal, yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the impression I got. In alternative medicine, supplements like adaptogens, uh, ashwagandha, uh, which I have tried ashwagandha. Uh, surprisingly, I, I actually really like the taste of ashwagandha. It's like this this like weird like bitter taste. It doesn't really taste like anything else but ashwagandha, and, and I, I kind of really like the taste of it. Um, but uh, I, I haven't really like noticed anything beneficial. Um, maybe the people around me would, but um, as, as my life is, I, I've decided not to keep taking it because um, I, I, I've heard it can damage the liver, so I'm, I'm worried about that. But rhodiola, I, I take uh, every day. Rhodiola has been has been great. So they're thought to help uh, regulate stress responses, but scientific evidence on their on their effectiveness is mixed. Um, while lifestyle like sleep, nutrition, and stress management can indeed support adrenal function indirectly, there is no straightforward or guaranteed method to support the glands in the way implied. Exactly. That, and that's, that's the, um, the impression I got is, is um, yeah, you can take some, um, you know, supplements, uh, the, the, you know, they might work, you know, the placebo effect is, is a real thing. So like, um, you know, if it's cost effective to, and all it is is the placebo effect, and it's really creating some results, then fine, um, is my my idea of it. But but you know, then you have to take a pill every day. You have to pay for it. So like, um, you know, if it is truly just the placebo effect, maybe there's a different way to get that uh, for free. Um, so the next one is is lowering cortisol output. So this is more measurable uh, practices such as mindfulness meditation. Uh, uh, can uh, reduce chronic uh, uh, cortisol uh, levels. So that's what, that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, chronic stress leads to uh, sustained high cortisol, um, which, uh, uh, so I, I probably have, have a, had a lot of sustained uh, high, uh, high uh, cortisol because um, I, I experienced a lot of uh, weight gain. All right, and then breaking the vicious cycle. Uh, lowering uh, uh, cortisol levels can uh, help disrupt the cycle of stress-related overeating and fat ac uh, accumulation. Um, however, addressing the full scope of this uh, vicious cycle often requires more comprehensive interventions that include psychological, emotional, behavioral changes just beyond targeting cortisol production. And I, I, I have to say on there, you'll hear a lot of people on YouTube say big pharma this big pharma that well this is what i will say it, it, it can help like like the, these you know medications can help and and there are people who it's not just stress it, it, it you know they have a real mental health issue they have um uh you know the, the mental health issues are very real uh schizophrenia is a a actual degradation in the brain um, um, uh, uh, Alzheimer's is, is actual plaque accumulation in the brain. There exists bipolar, there exists clinical depression, there exists BPD, there ex exists all kinds of very, very real um, uh, things that can happen to your brain just as things can happen to your heart, just as things can happen to your brain, to your legs, you can have a heart attack, you can break your leg. Um, all these things can happen to your body and there's nothing special about your brain either. Your brain can also have things that go wrong. You can have a uh, bipolar di diagnosis, you can have uh, schizophrenia, you can have a uh, chronic ang anxiety and stress that, that is beyond the levels that, that simple meditation can do. So, so that, that's what I have to say about that is, is, um, you know, addressing the full scope of this vicious cycle often requires more comprehensive interventions. So, 
Um, I, I really don't have any time or patience that people for people who just kind of say dismissively, you know, all all break pharma is bad because uh, it, it really can help. And, and for some people, it might really be the only way forward. So. But uh, but but that that's assuming that you're getting it from like a qualified physician and, and you're you're jump you're, you're not just like <laughs> getting it off the street or, or ordering some. Uh, hardcore psychological uh, uh, medication online. So, so if if it comes from a, a uh, valid source and, and and as a part of uh, 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 other other therapy, um, I I don't have a lot of uh, kind of pay. Well, I, I definitely have a lot of patients, but but I I really um d don't really have anything to uh, argue about. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know how to put this. I, basically, what I'm trying to say is, is uh, don't believe everything you hear on on YouTube because uh, a lot of people uh, kind of uh, are, uh, you know, conspiracy oriented um, uh, or like you have uh, malicious uh, uh, motives or like, you know, it's like, oh, don't trust Big Pharma trust my cult and, and this instead and, and buy my course on how you can heal yourself, you know, so be careful out there. It, it, it's hard and um, know that um, lowering cortisol can indeed help m mitigate some aspects of stress related health problems. But the claim oversimplifies the process by suggesting that supporting adrenal glands alone will resolve the issue. Um, a, a holistic approach to uh, stress management, including behavioral uh, changes and I would add including professional interventions that may involve pharmaceuticals is more effective so that's my take on it all right so uh, moving on um, so how so next one is the anatomy of anxiety and this is a this is a graphic by time magazine so it's just a one pager now there there is quite a lot dense a lot a lot packed on here so um uh it, it it's quite it's quite a big one so i I've, i'm kind of not feeling up to it <laughs> yeah so i'm kind of not feeling up to to this it's really dense um and, and i'm kind of worn out from that yoga so yeah i think that's going to be it for for this video Next video, we'll come back to uh, to this. We'll uh, close out the reading. Tomorrow, I'll try to think where I can use that stop exercise throughout the day, and I'll log one of those, and then it will be the the final uh, meditation of the week. Um, I think I kind of hope, uh, and uh, it should be the sitting meditation. Yeah, and then, and then that's all. That's it, and and very soon we'll be done with. Uh, week four. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.